Hi there, this is Nina Diaz, and this is All the World's a Stage. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're returning, well, you're the best in all the land. Thank you for coming back. I hope that you've been liking everything you've been seeing. Obviously, you have because you're back. I'm a musician. I've uh, fronted a band called Girl in a Coma. We were signed to Joan Jett's label, Black Heart Records. Released many an albums, toured all over the US and overseas. I'm a solo artist now, and I have my own production company called Beat Girl Productions, where I'm an engineer and a producer. You can find out more about all that stuff looking up my website. You think, hey, she seems pretty cool, but where can I see her play in the person of the live, live shows? Check it out. I, I have some shows coming up. You can find all that information on my website as well. NinaDiazSolo.com You still want more though? You should join my Patreon. On my Patreon you get behind the scenes extra goodies. You get some reaction videos that I didn't post on YouTube. You get studio stuff. You get lots of cool stuff. You just gotta go. You should just go check it out. So I started this reaction stuff in February, right? And that theme for the month was female fronted bands or female artists. And this month, the theme, because it's March, is 1988 songs that were popular, maybe hit songs that did something influential in the 88 year. You know what else was influential in the 88 year? Me, because I was born. March 14th, 88. That's me, Pi. Albert Einstein's birthday, too. Billy Crystal. So this month is 1988. Let's see what was rocking while I was rocking out of my mom's... I love the 90s. I love grunge. In my band, Girl in a Coma. I think, I like to think that you can hear that influence in our music. One song in particular I wrote called Baby Boy was very much influenced by this band. All of these faces have nothing to sign I've heard this music before, but it's been a minute since I've seen the video, if I had even, have even seen the video. So today, tonight, to now, we are going to watch the video for Teenage Riot by Sonic Youth. <laughs> See where that, that guitar fell down? Classic. One of my first shows. I didn't know about guitar straps. I didn't know they existed. I didn't know your guitar could fall down. Not only in my first couple of shows I've, I've played live, I would look cross-eyed at the microphone because I was so shy and nervous. But this one show, my guitar just fell right off of me in the middle of me playing a really slow song too. And I was wearing a polka dot shirt, so it was like extra embarrassing. It was like big polka dots. Man, I instantly just want, it makes me think of tour. It makes me just, I just want to, I don't want to condone cigarettes, but to smoke a cigarette and just jam some Sonic Youth. Kim Gordon is an amazing, all of them are, they have their own vibe going on. I like to think of it as controlled chaos. It's a particular taste, Sonic Youth. Sometimes 
depending on your mood, it can make you feel like, ah, but again, controlled chaos. And Kim Gordon, when she's on stage, the way that she like kind of, I guess it's very primal and sexual, how she is one with her bass. Kim Gordon actually is somebody that influenced me a lot when I was finding my rhythm and stage presence in Girl in a Coma. So when I started to actually play on the floor with my guitar, you have Kim Gordon to thank for that. Here he comes now Stick to your guns and let him through And everybody's coming from the winter vacation To give him a song and that's all that was a good, that was a, that was a sonic, not static pose, a sonic pose in yoga. The deep lunge of a crowd surfer. You got, you, I want to see how all of them stretch before the show. Like they're like, all right guys, let's stretch the groins. We're going to go to the Sonic Youth show. Deep Spider-Man stretches. That's the other thing I love about Sonic Youth is controlled chaos. We said that. The driving force of just, there's many shots of them just moving like that with their guitar. It's, it's like, a, I guess in a way when, when somebody's possessed and it's like this, this other force is just running through you. I feel like Sonic Youth definitely embraces that not only in their performances, but in their sound and the strings that just come out all crazy on the guitar. I learned to cut my strings like after you put new ones on because I poke myself many times with it. But then you feel all cool though when you do poke yourself. Like I used to love it when at the end of a show I had cut my fingers because maybe I dropped my pick and there's blood on my guitar. I think this was a good show. I got blood on my guitar. See, that's their version of a guitar solo. It feels very subliminal with all of the imagery in, in this video, but I recognize some of those faces. You had, I saw Daniel Johnston, Jack Kerouac, Patti Smith, and it's all, it's like a, a clockwork orange, but of grunge and very poetic, influential people. And also in the structure of this song, even though it's controlled chaos and it's just driving you through, they have moments where they let you breathe. It's almost like I, I bungee jumped once and it felt, it feels this rush when you're falling. And then when it bounces you back up, there's a moment where you just feel light and then you go crazy again. I feel like Sonic Youth is very mindful of that in this particular era of their writing. And this song being one of the, well, the first song that I think they played publicly 
uh, for this album. So a nice way to ease people in if they weren't ready for just complete chaos right away with those moments of musical breath. Lovely time with Sonic Youth. There's a really cool documentary called uh, Sonic Youth 1991, the year, the year Punk Broke. It has Sonic Youth in it, it has Babes in Toyland in it, it has Nirvana in it. It's definitely a documentary that, that was actually filmed majority by Thurston Moore himself that I like to watch before I go on tours. It just gets me in the vibe. And this video in particular I love the aesthetic of it because it was the time and I, I, I'd like to think that that's something I can bring back. Good on ya. Well, thank you for joining me for another episode of All the World's a Stage. If this was your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Just do it. And if this is you back again, didn't we have fun like we always do? All right, till next time. Bye.